what is up everyone welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl Sid. <laughs> i am back with another video um in this video i think i want to title this video try again so quick little update your girl cut her hair the other day and i was going for a bob moment this is like day three hair so it's looking a little ratchet but i'm gonna insert a clip no it's not it's, i'm lying it looks nice and shiny um it looks good but you know after a long day of work and stuff you start looking a little crazy anyway so i think i'm gonna title this video try again because that is what's been like heavily on my heart these last couple days and i've been listening to um like sermons around that um, I got these two lumps on my face. Um, but I've been listening to sermons around that and, um, God has been speaking a couple things to me, um, as it relates to that. And so let's get straight into it. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you have your way in this, in this space, in this moment, as I open up and share some of the truths that you have, um, shared with me. And, um, I just wanted to come on here and share. So. Uh, so the first thing I want to start off with is what I wrote in my journal <clears throat> as it relates to trying again. And this is what the Lord said to me. You trying again is your mustard seed. Um, all requires, all God requires of us is a little faith. And then I said, do the last thing God told you to do. Try again because he won't fail. Most times we put ourselves in predicaments or, uh, um, think ourselves out of the promises of God because of what our abilities are and what we are capable of doing in our own strength. And so what God is really having me to to focus on and lean into is um, that he won't fail. Like he is the one who is the one who is orchestrating all of this in the first place. Like we can't control any outcomes. And I've, I've mentioned that before time and time again on my channel. But one thing that um, he's really been stressing is just that you got to keep trying. Like that is what, where the real victory is. And I believe that Pastor Mike Todd has said that, that that's where the real victory is, is acting in obedience. Um, it's not the outcome of what you do, because some of the things that you will do for God will not get the... Um, expected in that you thought it was supposed to be a lot of times in the Bible it talks about how um, a person thought their healing was going to come but it came in this like I thought you were going to do this Jesus but you didn't I thought you were going to show up um, just like Martha ran to him like if you would have been here I thought you would have been here by now and you let my brother die before you even showed up <clears throat> Naaman said to the prophet I thought that you will come out here, lay hands, say these big words to me, and then my body will be healed. But you tell me to go bathe in a dirty bath and in a dirty river um, to get my healing. So it's a lot of things that we have preconceived notions of what we think God is supposed to be doing in our lives, and we miss the actual blessing that He's trying to do. Another example today, right? My son is flying out for Christmas to go with his dad next week. And every other year we alternate Christmas and this Christmas is his turn and money has been so tight. Right. And I was already like stressing about this for days now, like days to come. I've been like stressing about this. Like I cannot with these flights. And so yesterday I gave this sacrificial offering or I said, God, I'm going to give you what I have. Um, I'm going to give you what I have. This is just a real transparent moment. Like, I'm going to give you what I have. And I just pray that what I'm expecting of you um, with these flights, like it was like, this was like literally me giving, not as if God is a genie. Like, that's not what I was thinking in the moment. But I was just saying like, God, I know that th these principles work. The principles that you have laid out on this earth, the sowing and reaping and the, um, and planting and harvesting like I know those things are real they are true I serve a true and living God and so um I gave a gift yesterday and I sowed a seed um as it relates to what I was believing him for and it didn't happen <clears throat> and the prices were still skyrocketing the 
everything that was still the, the same way it was, right? And so I'm looking to God like, okay, what I gave that gift for nothing. But as I was listening to tonight, um, I'm watching this, a series called I'm Gifted by Pastor Darius Daniels. And it's just talking about the spiritual gifts. And he spoke about, I think it was uh, him and another pastor were speaking together, but he had spoke about um, him giving in one season, thinking he was given towards one thing. But in, little did he know that seed that he sown was for something in the future that impacted what, his walk with Christ. Like, And that just made me be even grateful that even though the things that I think that God should be doing, or I think that, that God, I did this. So this now it's your turn to do this. Like, I'm so glad that I serve a God that his ways are higher than mine. And I don't have to give up trying or give up doing well <clears throat> because he promised that in due season that I will reap a harvest if I faint not. And then, so I was reading, Holy Spirit, please help me with this one because I was reading Second Kings 4 to my son last night and it made me think of sec First Kings 17 because I'm just like, okay, the prophet Elijah and the prophet Elisha, um, Elisha got double the anointing that prophet Elijah had because that's what he asked um, before uh, Elijah was taken up into heaven. <clears throat> he was caught up in the cloud <clears throat> and taken to heaven. So my mind immediately went back. So I'm like, okay, this is so confusing because these, these stories are so similar. They're so like so closely related because Elijah had went to a widow woman's house who was going to feed her son the last of what? Nope. Wait. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Help me, Holy Spirit. I told you that. I told you I don't want to get it confused. She was going to feed her son the last of what she had. And then, um, He told her to fill her jars. I believe that was Elijah. And Elisha is the one who told the woman that, ooh, Jesus. Okay, nope, I don't want to get it wrong. I got my phone right here. So we're going to go to it real fast because I don't want to get it confused. I'm like, why am I paraphrasing when it, it's the whole Bible right here? Um, so First Kings chapter 17 Elijah fed by the ravens uh Elijah the little 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 Elisha gave her instructions. Who Jesus. All right. All right. Don't go ahead of yourself. Um, Elisha gave her instructions to um, go home, make what you have. Um, and it says the jar of flour will not be used up, but the oil and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends land, land on the rain. So she, ne she never ran out of flour and she never ran out of oil. That was the lady who, that was the widow that did not run out of um, the things that she needed, the, the things that she was going to use last. But she gave a sac, she sacrificed what she had and she gave it to the prophet first. And then everything was overflowing. And I'm not saying that every time it's not going to, oh, Holy Spirit, help me to say it how, I, how I'm trying to say that. Mm -mm -mm, help me, Lord. It doesn't mean that every time we give a gift that we are to expect the miraculous to happen immediately. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there is seed time harvest. Like, but in this instant, this lady was literally on her last, Oh, Holy spirit. Mm. This is hard y'all because I'm trying to say it the way that God gave it to me. You know what? I'm going to read what I have right here. And it just says, don't compromise on what you ask God for. And compromise means to accept standards that are lower than desirable. 
And I wrote for 2 Kings and 1 Kings, so 2 Kings 4 and 1 Kings 17, instructions were given, actions were taken, and super, God super met their natural. That's what I wanted to, that's what I'm trying to think, say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that equated to overflow. So instructions were given, actions were taken, and God put his super on their natural, which led to them having overflow. Because the late the the widow in the book of uh Second Kings four, she had her husband had died and she the debt the creditors were coming after her and they were gonna take everything that she had, even her son. And so um Elisha told her to um go collect jars from the neighbors and gather all that you can and she can continue to pour oil but the thing is when we continue to try with the lord when we continue to do what he has asked of given has instructed us to do instructions are always given first and then there's there is jesus i'm sorry guys instructions are always given first and then actions are required to be taken on our part like we can't be laxed in thinking that god is going to do it all and i think i've talked about that in my last video how i was serving a god um who was strictly um dropping manna from the sky that that's the box that i put god in and he's been really expanding my mind to see that it's in the everyday things. It's in the continual walking, the continual believing, but the continual action steps on my part and listening to the instructions of the Lord. He has really had me in a season of breaking down pride um, because I won't try again because of pride. I won't do certain things because, because of pride and even in being um, more apologetic to people because, oh, Lord, all right, <laughs> okay, even with who I am, I'm going to put it like this, God got me out here trying to put my business out here, but anyway, it's okay, I am, I have been labeled by people, not everybody, because I don't know everybody, but you know, I've been labeled before as the good girl. So as the good girl and having that mentality, I used that as a whew, as a cover almost um, to not being the one to apologize or feeling like I'm the person in the wrong in the situation in situations. I was trying to explain that too because. For example, if an argument is taking place between uh, me and another person, um, I will use, like, I will try to flip it in a way that it made it seem that my actions were innocent. Ooh, like innocent. Like, I didn't really mean it that my intentions, knowing that good and well, good and well, that my intentions weren't as pure as I said them to be. And I almost flipped it as if, like, oh, no, I wasn't trying to do, you know, I wasn't trying to be that way. And God has really have been taking me out of this space of pride. And I've been having to go back and apologize to people almost immediately. And apologizing is not my cup of tea. And I realized that because I would just go into this place of com complete silence. Um, and I just wouldn't speak. Lack of accountability. And God has really been like opening my eyes in that space of that space of pride that I've been hiding behind. Um, oh, and it's not pretty. It's really not pretty. And so even in that, I won't try again because the fear of, oh, I got to go back and say this. So now what are they going to think of me now that I have to go back and humble myself and say sorry for making them seem as if I was the innocent party in this, the part that I played um, or the role that I played, any of it, like just just trying to um, be more accountable for the actions that I've taken. And God has been really convicting me like, oh, mm -mm. and even if I'm about to act from a place of pride, the Holy Spirit literally rises up in me and I can feel the resistance. 
And sometimes I push past that resistance and I'm still walking in pride, but then I have to go back. Why well, do it anyway? Because you're just going to have to backtrack. Like, you're just going to have to backtrack and say sorry. You're just going to have to, like, <laughs> like get it right the first time, Sydney. And, and every time I do that, um, I think of the scripture that Paul said, the good I would do, I do not. Um, but the evil I don't want to do, I do. And it's sometimes it's like that. It's like you're in a constant battle and a struggle in your mind of God. Okay, this is what I want to do. And I don't even know how I ended up here. But I was just I was just sharing that as an example of where I am with God and all of that. But I'm going to try to stay on track and uh, basically on what I was saying, like even in trying again with that, that statement that I got um, from the Lord, don't compromise on what you ask God for. Um, we can end up, end up compromising because we don't want to try um, because the last time it failed. Or it seems so impossible and so beyond us. Like that that is where I am. Um, some of the things that I'm asking God for seem so beyond me that I'm like, God, there is no absolute no way. But then he'll wake me up with songs like um that oh Jesus, what's the song? Jesus, it was right there. Mm-mm. Oh, anything can happen. And something's about to break. Sorry, I had to think for a second. So anything can happen in here because he's the God of the impossible. So why he shows us these things so that we can take it back to him and believe him for it, but not so that we can carry it. And I was just thanking him earlier for being such a gracious God for not giving, throwing so much on us um, of what we are asking for um, at all at once. Because I was thinking about like how much responsibility, like now my thought process towards the promise is like what Pastor Keon Henderson said, wealth is a responsibility and it's not optional like what god has for us is a responsibility the things that we're asking for is not always pretty it's something that we have to manage be fruitful multiply subdue the earth subdue take under your submission have the thing under your submission and under your authority and control and that's not always easy because we're dealing with people places and things that are we're not to control but we are just to have some type of authority thank you holy spirit authority in that in that space and that takes a lot of practice that takes a lot of patience that takes a lot more that is in you and i'm noticing in this in this season of my life god is pulling a lot of things out of me so that when i do come into where he has said is mine um, that I'm not taking all of that stuff with me, that I'm not bringing all that extra baggage, that I'm not bringing this, this bulk load of pride that I've been hoarding all of these years, um, with me to where he's taking me. And it's painful. It's ugly. Kind of like this, um, this bump on my face It's real. Well, two bumps, but it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Um, but it's worth trying again. It's worth believing again because like i said in the in the beginning of this our try is our mustard seed it gives something for god to work with someone said that god couldn't jesus couldn't turn the water into wine if there was no water he had to he could he can make a way out of no way but we all we have to give him something to work with we have to give him something to work with we have to be willing to give him what we have, even if it's just a little bit of faith, if it's a little bit of sacrifice, if it's, if it's not sacrificing your money, it's sacrificing your time. I've been, mm, Lord, I've been trying, but I had, no, I've been doing well. I'm not going to say I've been trying. I've been waking up at four o'clock in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as a sign of Lord, here I am to give you the space that I have in the morning to talk to you, to worship you, to get, to gain understanding of, um, where I am in this season and what I could be doing in this season to better 
myself and to better um yeah myself for the kingdom basically because somebody i know i say a lot of pastors names because i listen to a lot of them because i want all of this goodness in my ear but i also read the word for myself but i do like to listen to word but it's basically on my commute to work some days i work or some days i listen to um different preachings but one thing that Pastor Darius Daniel said tonight on his um, I'm Gifted Thrive series, he said that the gift is not for us. Like we can't be selfish no matter if you're upset, no matter if you are frustrated. We can't we can't operate in a place of, oh, I'm not going to serve today. I'm not going to. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know this video is getting a little long, but I'm not going to serve today. But. We have to realize the gifts that God gives us is for, for the kingdom. Whether we're upset, whether we're happy, God can use us um, in all those spaces. Because not all the time you're going to feel like it. You're not going to always feel like it. What was I going to say? Because that was so good. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And now it's like, no, because I kept talking. I think I left that one. Oh, it was so good. It was right there. Something good is happening in here. Something good. Something good. Something good. Um. Okay. I think I'm going to wrap it up right here because I can't remember what the heck I was about to say. But it was so good. But I'm going to post that video link below so y'all can get into that goodness that was preached on tonight. Um just about how he was breaking down gifts and just um, being deceived um, by the enemy when it comes to those giftings and ooh, being so intoxicated uh, with life, with pride. When he said pride, that's what sparked what I was just talking about tonight too with, with pride because God has been showing me my prideful ways and breaking those patterns. And so when he said that being intoxicated with pride being intoxicated with fear those things keep us in darkness that's why god says to be sober-minded and we can sometimes uh only relate that scripture to alcoholism or something like that or being you know actually intoxicated with some type of substance but no we can be blinded and intoxicated and not thinking and seeing clearly through different lenses through pride through jealousy through rage through anger through envy, being intoxicated with those spirits. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I mean, intoxicated with those spirits that we're not seeing clear enough and operating in the gifts that God has given us. But once again, to tie it all back together, I hope it makes sense because I know I be rambling on here sometimes, but I hope it makes sense. But take everything back to God and ask him what he wants you to try again because we are about to go into a new year and we can be expecting something new from God oh but he can give you something again something afresh afresh like Pastor Mike Todd said he said he can give you something again that he wants you he'll give you the same instruction you have to just be obedient we, we're going to a new year thinking God's gonna be a new word new me new this new that no do what God already told you to do so that you can actually walk into the promise that he promised you years ago, weeks ago, months ago, whatever it may be. Step back into that and try again. But try again with a new perspective, with a new, try to have a clean slate, even with people, even with places, even with something that you tried to put your hand to. Because um, I think I even shared on here how I just wiped my um, my store clean because i'm just like this is not the product this product is not producing but not only is it produ not producing it's not good it's not good but anyway y'all let me get off here because i'm gonna keep talking i'm gonna keep finding something something else gonna keep popping up and i'm gonna keep going but thank y'all so much for tuning into today's video and i will catch you guys on the next one bye